I'm sad. Why am I sad? Well, that's because no matter what happens, good news, bad news, anything in between, seems like no matter what happens, Corsair gaming stock just tends to just trend down and just stay flat no matter what happens. Take a look at today's chart. For example, on today's earnings report that came out this morning, it shot up massively. At one point, I think we reached up 8% on the day, and then it downtrended and downtrended and downtrended, and that pretty much looks for the year chart or even the all-time chart for this company. This company immediately shot up from the time it hit its IPO, reaching $51 a share back on November 24th of 2020, and since then, it has been a slow and steady bleed out in the stock price, and we bought our shares at an average price of $26.86, right here where my mouse is at. And today we trade at $25 a share. Now, if you know me and you've seen my Fidelity portfolio, you know that this is one of the largest positions in my portfolio. We have five stocks that we're invested in, Chewy Stock, Corsair Gaming, iRobot, Tattooed Chef, Clean Spark, and we're doing pretty good on all of them. And if you look at my account history, our portfolio has steadily been trending up. Initially starting with 30 grand, we went up and slowly trended up. And over this past month or so, we are far ahead of our goals from our month over month and year over year goals. Now, looking at Corsair Gaming, it's really one of the only companies I'm down on. I'm down on Tattooed Chef a little bit, but it's not nearly as big as my Corsair Gaming position. Now, Corsair Gaming is down 6%, and I wanna talk about in this video, this company's earnings that it just came out with, and what I think it will have to do for the stock price to move upward. Also in this video, we're gonna go over other things as well, like search trends, including gaming laptops, gaming PCs, Corsair Gaming, the Elgato brand, the financials of this company, all that good stuff, so we got a lot to dive into. If you haven't checked it out, already take a look at this get up to fifty dollars that's fifty dollar bills just to get signed up with m1 finance and if you want to get free stocks with robin hood or for free stocks with weeble get signed up with the best you got savings account in town donate to financially support my college career or sign up with other things like earning money for your smartphone or getting signed up with credit cards for some of the best ones out there that all is down below in the description Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and like the video, and let's go ahead and jump straight into Corsair Gaming. Now, looking at this right here, this is the investor relations page for Corsair Gaming. And we'll briefly go over these numbers, and I think that it's definitely highlighted a lot better on Hypercharge, which we're about to jump into. But basically, you can see that net revenue was 1.39 million, or 1.39 billion, I should say, an increase of 21% year over year, and the quarter over quarter numbers was not good at all. It was a decrease of 14.4% at 391.1 million. Diluted earnings per share was absolutely horrible, and that was by far and away my most negative part of this, uh, this earnings report. Now, looking at the revenue here on hypercharge.com, which by the way, as a side note, I absolutely love this website. Something about it is just so cosmetically appealing. You can see that the uptrend in revenue due to lockdowns in the gaming sector becoming more popular and Corsair Gaming taking advantage of the growing gaming and streaming market. Now looking at quarter three of 2020 right here, it was a decrease of 457 million to this year's 391 million. That's not good. Looking at the profitability, same story. A year ago, we had $36 million in net income. This year, in that quarter, we produced just 1.7 million. The profitability was in the toilet. We talked about it, how this company pre-announced how its profitability was gonna be garbage. The shipping container costs and other supply chain restraints held this company back in terms of its revenue, and especially in terms of its profitability. They're paying multiple times what they would for shipping containers just a year ago, and it's really hurting their bottom line. Now, you can see at the margins, horrible. Profitability, horrible. Revenue, not so great. Now, why am I still holding this company? Why have I actually continued to buy more and more of it? And I've never been excited about this company better than ever. And well, the reason why mostly has to do with this number right here. Well, if we look here at Yahoo Finance, I, like many retail investors, love to look at the Ford PE. Now, I know that this doesn't capture everything in regards to the growth of the company and the total aspect, I get it, but a Ford PE does give you a good aspect for a company like this, where it's moving forward. Now, the average in the market right now for a Ford PE, I believe is around a 21 last time I checked. Now, let's go ahead and see what this company's doing in earnings next year and see how this relates to the stock price. Now, analysts, after revising this company downward and downward in terms of their profitability, three months ago, they were projecting that in 2022, they're gonna do $2 and then they lowered that to 1.9, and then they lowered it again to 1.7, and now, as of today, they lowered it to 1.72. Okay, and so let's take this number, and let's take the today's stock price of 25 bucks, okay, and divide by, let's see, $25, divide by 1.72, that gives this company a forward PE ratio of 14.5. 
Now let's pretend for a second that Corsair Gaming cannot hit these numbers. Whether it's due to supply chain constraints or people just not liking the company, let's pretend that they're only going to do $1.50. Which keep in mind, even after the revision down, they're already expected to do $1.50 this year. Let's pretend that they only do $1.50 next year. They very well could beat $1.72, but let's pretend that they miss it big time and only come in with $1.50. If we take these numbers, we take $25 divided by 1.5, that gives it today's forward PE at that conservative number at 16.6. If we take that exact same thing and put in what I bought the stock at, which is $26.28, if we take that number and divide by the conservative estimate of 1.5 in earnings per share next year, that still gives it a forward PE of under 18 in this extremely, extremely conservative scenario. So I think when you factor in the fact that Corsair Gaming, after all this negative news that it's priced in, if we just can assume that Corsair Gaming could even have a below average year next year, the stock price is likely to have an uptrend if valuations matter for this company at all. We know that investors are being extremely pessimistic on the stock, and I wanna show another reason in regards to Google search trends why I think this is just not showing the full picture of Corsair Gaming in terms of its long-term growth, and why COVID does not have a whole lot to do with this company's long-term growth story. Now, if we look at the search trends here, I wanna pull up a bunch of different trends, a bunch of different search trends on Google, okay? Gaming computer, okay? This is just the gaming computer sector in general. And by the way, Corsair Gaming is the number one seller for gaming PCs. Just wanna keep that in mind. So right now it is early November. So let's look late October, early November around this time to see where the search trends were. In 2019, key here, we're going to look at 2019 numbers. We all know what happened in 2020 with the shutdowns. And so all those numbers are gonna be way higher. Shutdowns are gone. We are going to look at 2019 numbers before COVID pre-COVID numbers and compare that over, to, over time to 2021 numbers. Now, at the end of October, early November, you can see that it was starting to uptrend a little here, so it was about high 20s, maybe around a 26, 28, maybe 30 at the high end. Well, right now, late October, early November, we're searching at about a 40. You see that it says 39, then a 42 as of right now. So you can see that it's a little bit higher than it was during 2019. This was around a 25, 30, somewhere around there, and now it's in the low 40s, okay? What about another search trend? What about gaming PC? Okay, if we go to this, late October, early November, we are trading about mid 20s, 25, 26, somewhere around there on average. Well, today it's 37, higher again. What about gaming laptop? Now gaming laptop is not nearly a search, so the results are a little bit skewed, but still you can see that it traded, or I say traded, I'm so used to dealing with stocks. Not traded, but these results came in for Google search trends at about a 40 roughly. Well, today we're about a 40 roughly, low 40, so about the same, maybe a slight little uptick. What about Corsair Gaming? Corsair Gaming, let's look late October, early November. You can see it was in the mid 30s, about 34, 35. Today, it sits around 42, 44, a higher again. What about Elgato? Elgato is one of the main brands that Corsair Gaming owns and one of their primary revenue drivers. Well, let's look, late October, early November, during this time last year, it was about a 37, 38 roughly. And you can see right now, it is projected in the next couple of days to finish out at 55. And that's a little bit higher, all these averages, than what it was before. You get the point. Whether you're searching gaming PC, gaming laptop, gaming computer, Corsair Gaming, or even their side uh, subsidiary, uh, Elgato, you can see that the moral of the story is, according to Google, people are searching more for gaming laptops, gaming equipment than they were in 2019. Not in 2020, but in 2019, which is the key here. And that's the same thing I do for some of my other companies, which is why it's one of my largest positions is Chewy, for example. If we look at the end of 2019 for Chewy, you can see that October, November, this time last year, it was about 60, roughly 59, 60. Well, right now it's 73, 74. Once again, an uptrend. And this shows you that if you look at COVID numbers, you'll think, wow, the numbers are way lower going from 2020 to 2021. And that may be true, but at the end of the day, I think what this did is just put a gas pedal and just lighted the fire to what this company's growth story was already gonna be. It definitely pulled forward that demand and put in great 2020 numbers, but 2021 and 2022 and moving on forward, I think that all this did was just put this company in a better position to grow because they're still growing faster than they did in 2019 for Corsair Gaming. And I think that long-term, 2021, 2022, 2023, I think that the revenue and profit 
adaptability for the story is going to be massive. I think regardless of whether or not you agree with the shipping container costs and the supply chain constraints, it's all noise, it's all short term stuff. Maybe you sell out of it, maybe you want to buy a bunch more of the stock like I do. But the good news is I'm only down 6% based off where we're at today, 6.64 to be exact, which is only a couple hundred bucks. It's not fun to be down, but I guess what? I, I got covered calls. I mean, if you factor in the covered calls, I'm actually down a $100 bill because I'm up $7.91 on the covered calls, down $8.91 on the shares. I, I've lost $100, okay? That, that sucks, but $100 in almost a $40,000 portfolio, that's chump change, guys. So the thing is with Corsair Gaming, um, bullish, so bullish, will continue to be one of my largest positions. I am not selling out anytime soon. I mean, heck, those covered calls means that I'm holding till September of next year anyway. But I think, guys, no matter what happens with these earnings calls, no matter what happens with shorts or Eagle Tree selling out of their position or any other short-term noise, the long-term growth story for Corsair Gaming and the Elgato brand and its other subsidiaries as well are going to be fantastic. I think that it is a great time to be buying Corsair Gaming stock. It's not financial advice. I can't recommend that on YouTube. Consult your financial advisor, but all I'm saying is I'm going to be buying more of it, and we'll see if this pans out to be a good or bad decision. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, check out that stuff down below in the description. Get up to $50 getting signed up with them on finance, free stocks with Robinhood, Webull, free savings accounts, credit card referrals, all that good stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe and like down below if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.